Hello there and welcome to Fairyland Cottage and thanks very much for joining me here today. It was the most beautiful May day, the sun was shining, it was early in the morning and there's nothing like watching the sun just flicker through all the trees in the fairy forest. And I had a few things to plant in the garden so I thought I would bring you along with me. So I'm moving all the plants, the ones that I planted from seed from the potting shed into the polytunnel. Now it's said that the best time to do any planting is early morning. Because if it's done too late, especially with the midday sun, it can just get a little bit stressful for the plants because it's so hot. Now you don't need to have a potting shed if you're looking to grow any fruit or veg or flowers. You can just do it in a windowsill. And you definitely don't need a polytunnel to grow vegetables. In Ireland, we don't really get that much hot temperatures. So polytunnel just helps to regulate some vegetables that need a little bit of a warmer climate. So first of all, I'm potting out these corn now this is the first time growing some corn. I use the toilet roll holders. I find they work considerably well and then it's able to be contained and you just pop it out and then into the soil. So the traditional way of growing was you would grow the corn and then you would grow the peas beside the corn so that they could grow up along the corn stalks. I'm going to try it this year and see how we go. For watering the vegetables, I'll always keep buckets that can get filled with rainwater. And the fertilizer I use mostly is nettles. And I use this because it's just there in the back garden in abundance. And nettles are a fantastic fertilizer for fruit and veg. So I just chop a big bunch and then I'll pop it into a bucket and just leave it there. You'll know when it's ready because it gets really smelly. And I'll pop these on the vegetables about once a week or when I feel they just need a little boost. It's basically your way of giving them some nutrition. So I'll have the fresh nettles in one, then ones that are a bit older, and then another bucket that's really old. And I'll just keep filling them up with more water. You don't have to be too fussy, I don't do any measuring. So when you're transplanting a vegetable, you just have to make sure that they're really well watered afterwards. It just helps them settle into the ground. So the next one I'm planting in is some lettuce. Now lettuce is a great thing to grow if you're a beginner grower. You also don't need to plant in the ground lettuce. It can be done on a pot, on a windowsill. It's actually really nice to just have right outside your back door if you have a balcony because you can just pop out and clip a bit off for your salad. And we found having a polytunnel that there is a little bit less slugs. But I don't do anything specifically to eliminate the slugs. More or less, I will collect them at night time and then bring them far, far away from the house. But I don't find there's too much slugs. They're not eating everything, but they do snip a little leaf here and there. But once they're leaving enough for us to eat, I'm okay. So next I'm transplanting some courgette. Now with something like courgette, you can grow it in a pot, a nice big pot. 
The courgette gets really big leaves, so it needs a lot of room around it to be able to expand. And that's the thing I learned over time. You can read all the measurements in a book, but I always found it a little bit confusing. So you'll learn yourself when you see and you grow something that how much room it needs. So we call it courgette in Ireland, but I know a lot of you call it zucchini. And then this wire here we have up is to keep the rabbits out. That's a really important thing when you're growing vegetables, especially in the countryside, because you attract all the wildlife and rabbits will eat through everything. Another little tip I do is I use the food scraps and I put it directly into the soil. I know I've mentioned this before, but I think it's been the most important thing to really improve the quality of the soil we have. Now we started off here years ago with very bad soil. It was more like dirt. So it's taken time to rebuild the soil naturally. So I've shared this before, any food scraps you have, it's like peelings, stalks, things like that. And you have a nice deep trench. And just make sure it's nice and deep and the worms will come in abundance. So it's that time of year again in May where in the very forest all the bluebells grow. And they don't last for that long, so I thought it was nice to just pick a few to have in the house and just share with you the beautiful tranquility of the fairy forest. Bluebells in Ireland grow wild and they really give a magical carpet to any forest. May is a wonderful time of year, especially in the garden, because everything's really starting to come alive. We've noticed that two different types of birds have built their nest in the garden. They're building their nest, they're getting ready for their little babies to come along. Everything's just alive, plants start to grow a little bit more. The good thing about Irish weather is we get a lot of rain, which the fruit and veg of the right side really appreciate. And then when we get a nice sunny day, they get the full benefit. So gardening can be hard work. It's a lot of physical labor, bending, twisting, digging. So I never do too much. I'll just do a little bit in the morning and then of course stop for a cup of tea. I never think it's worth it pushing yourself. Just do a little bit and then I can do more tomorrow. In the past, I used to want to get everything done and I'd go, go, go until I was absolutely exhausted. So the yarrow was growing really strong. Yarrow's a wonderful herb. I'm gonna make a cup of tea I also have here some sticky back that we found growing in the polytunnel. Other name is cleaver, that's the main name, but you call it sticky back because it will stick to all your clothes. And then I thought I'd add some of the chocolate mint, which grows in abundance here. Now, we all know that yarrow is great if you have a bleed or cuts or scrapes. But it's also great in tea, it's great for the immune system, it's great for digestion. But it's also great for if you have any trouble with blood clots. So women can find it very beneficial. And the sticky back is another great herb for your immune system. It particularly works with the lymphatic system and it just helps flush out any toxins. 
and you can just use it fresh in some tea. I'm going to do a video during the summer of drying herbs and different herbs that you can use for teas. The sticky back cleaver will grow wild and the yarrow I planted, the mint I planted, but there can be loads of wild herbs you find that can be used in tea. And of course, once you know what you're picking. So that's it for this week. I'd love as always to chat down below or over on Instagram. I hope you've enjoyed this little pottering around the garden. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful week. Keep it simple and I'll see you next week.